the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to show 20 of Grey Hat Beard, the modern workplace podcast where we talk all things Microsoft 365 in the modern workplace. My name's Kevin McDonald. I'm the Grey of Grey Hat Beard. I'm a solutions architect at CPS. My name's Alan Erdley. I'm an architect at CPS and Microsoft MVP. And my name is Gary Trinder. I'm a solutions architect at CPS. I'm the beard of Grey Hat Beard, and I'm also a Microsoft MVP. And Al appears his, his role is gradually getting shorter and shorter. He's now just an architect at CPS. Just an architect. So I'd like just to reassure you, he is all okay. You know, we're not just putting him in a cupboard there and uh, <laughs> waiting him to fade away in the office because no one else is there. Uh, this week, we're going to, again, do go back to two parts, hopefully. In part one, we're going to talk about the latest news. And then in part two, we're going to just say no. For you UK listeners, there is no Zamo, no Grange Hill, nothing to do with that. It's about making sure that you don't overcommit yourself and don't just jump in and do everything. So learning at the right time to say no, um, as Gary has been proving very well today. But find out more about that in show two, uh, in part two of the show. In part one, we're going to kick off some news, and I think we're going to start with some interesting updates from Jared Spatero, who's, uh, ooh, what is his role? He, he looks after modern workplace effective at Microsoft, uh, doesn't he? I know he gave the, the keynote on modern workplace at Ignite, and he shared some updates on Twitter um, studying the impact the pandemics had on the on the workplace and well-being around the world and shared some findings. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, looking at some places hitting more burnout than others. I think Brazil obviously very highly impacted by the COVID crisis and getting burnout. But interesting, Singapore, which I think a lot of times was held as doing very well during the pandemic and sort of controlling it well. But uh, that control has, has come out of the cost number of percentage on, on this chart. They got the percentage increase of the work day versus the percentage increase of me people having the burnout. So Australia definitely jumping up the amount of hours they're working. It's quite interesting looking at this in terms of where different countries are based on where you might expect them to be. I would probably expect the UK mm -hmm. to be both further to the right and higher up than the US, but I, I'm suddenly realising lots of people aren't looking at the video. We are on YouTube, so if you want to go back yeah. and have a look at that. Um, we, we've got the UK about midway along. In fact, slightly below on the burnout percentage, just below 50%. Um, yeah, 20, sorry, not 27. 50, 27%, was it? 27%, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because I think Microsoft, you know, with Ignite, they they sparked a lot of interest with what they were saying about well-being and and basically measuring this and the way they're measuring this type of um, this type of information. And mm. la last week, I was um, one of the things I was doing was was learning about workplace analytics, which drives a lot of what what is being talked about in these this thread of uh, posts that Jared put out there. And I think it's it's really interesting when you look at what information Microsoft actually has with the graph because we've seen my analytics for quite a while but the use of workplace analytics is really to say well actually you know how do we identify people who are burning out and the way they're measuring that type of information is to say well actually if we're measuring how much you're collaborating then we know that you're you can't actually be necessarily working so depending on your job role if you're doing 30 hours of collaboration, as in sending emails, chatting on teams, in meetings, then you know you've only got 10 hours to do anything else that you might actually have to do within your your role. So it's quite an interesting way that these sort of signals that they've been collecting in the graph for years can actually be turned into indicators for well-being, for being productive. You know, if you can correlate that information with your HR system and say, well, we know these people are hitting their objectives. What do their profiles look like? Uh, or actually, to be fair, they don't look at individuals, they look at teams. So it's very much looking at small, small T. Yeah, small well, it's teams. small T, small T teams. Uh, they look at big T teams in terms of yeah. what you're doing, but it's yeah. so that it's anonymized. So there's, there's certain criteria to make sure that it's anonymized yeah. and not individuals. And I think 
that it, certainly when workplace analytics first came out, um, I was looking at the company I was working at the time and there was a lot of reservation about that and sharing the data and c- how can you prevent over eager HR or over eager managers using that saying this person's not working enough we need to have yeah. him at his desk or her at a desk um, or we need to have this person focused on these things they're not doing enough work and not looking at reality but looking just at stats uh, and how you balance those two things and I, I think it's a valid concern with all this as well. Yeah, absolutely and I think they've, they've got a lot of safeguards in place in terms of how they manage the privacy how they manage the you know the the number of people being analysed in a group to make up a group so that it's not it's not distinguishable as to who the individuals are. Um, mm. But they've got they've got a lot of safeguards in place. But it's yeah it's got quite a lot of different ways that it can be used in terms of you know adoption where people are being um, productive where people are adopting new ways of working where they're not um, and it can tie into all sorts of different data sources as well. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's intriguing to see mm. the way they're using it for these types of announcements as well. And the way it'll yeah. tie into Headspace and, you know, that virtual commute and all of that good stuff that they were talking about at Ignite as well. It'd be interesting to see how this fits in with different people's working styles as well. So we talk about, you know, you're spending a lot of time collaborating, but what does that mean in the numbers? I'd like to see, you know, are you collaborating throughout the day? as as a like a sustained frequency so you're constantly in teams and you're constantly on email are you giving yourself that break time so you know it'd be interesting to see where the spread is across the day because it's very easy to just be you know someone sends you an uh, an im in teams Mm -hmm. right i'm going to reply straight to them or you're going to leave it you know same with email do you reply straight away or do you leave it to a point in the day to to return i think having that information will really give a good insight site as well um, yeah. mm, because uh, usage is good but too much usage is also bad right <laughs> so. absolutely and i think there are other you know there are other things to take into account there in terms of you know how people you know and we'll talk about calendars later but how people manage their calendars and how that might skew the numbers because you know you are disciplined in how you manage your calendar that obviously will block time out and mean that maybe you are more efficient uh, and but it maybe that will show up as being more efficient so yeah, it's yeah. it's there's some there's a lot of really interesting. Keep, I think use keep some of that thought for for later. I think we'll definitely come back to. That. I, I think it's very certainly the Jared Spatero one, as you say, being able to take all that data and and look at it. And you, you mentioned the commutes. One of the things he said there was uh, remote workers. The lack of daily commute may help. Uh, sorry, may hurt, not help productivity mm. um, with yeah. this. So looking at those different things, and I, I think it's. I get the feeling certainly the timing of this and what they announced at Ignite, they're looking at real data of how it's affecting people and steering their products with that as well. The virtual commute has come from this evidence and looking at these numbers, which is it, it's great to see. You know, they're looking at ways people are using things and reorganizing what they do based on that, which is really good. It's good that they, they keep coming out with these um, kind of research uh, kind of pieces because, you know, we were talking about before about meeting fatigue as well. That was another um, kind of piece of research that Microsoft did. So it, it's based on real, you know, um, real stats out there. Um, so I hope that they keep keep doing these um kind of research mm. projects because I think they'll definitely feed into these these you know analytics tools in the workplace that are really going to be vital for not just the the people who work in the organizations but people who manage the organizations as well um you know well-being of, of employees making sure that yeah even though you're not in the office you are taking the time to to kind of look after yourself um, I, I, think I think it's Microsoft is one of the very few organizations with enough volume of this type yeah. of data to have <clears throat> easily anonymized easily useful data for all organizations rather than just those that are using its tools as well yeah yeah i, I it's funny we, we talk about uh, sort of well-being and things we we had a hackathon internally at cps this week uh and i know gary we, we were talking with uh, one of your teammates on on what you were doing there which was about being able to sort of 
organize calendars uh was it tranquility to make sure you know yes I, I prefer this time and being able to organize things to help you feel better our, our one was actually about uh, the daily ritual spot that would help you organize things at the start of day and at the end of the day sort of i know al you've blogged about this uh you know helping to construct your day to help mm -hmm. you more with well-being and also trying to organize meetings with people at the end of the day random please across the organization get to know more people chance to have a chat wrap up your day nicely uh, as, as you often say goodbye to people in the office at the end try and do the same thing there well-being is kind of come into what we're thinking about now i, I haven't seen the rest of the uh, the hackathon ones but it, it's obviously seeped into how we think about things as well it's it's so front of mind for everybody isn't it how do we mm. work now how are we going to carry on working like this is you know as a new norm it's mm. going to have to, it's going to have to uh, force us to adjust well, it, it's the balance, right? And and looking at the the, the first kind of a graphic that that you showed, um, Kevin, about the you know spending what up to another two hours at work, I think in in Australia, and you know mm -hmm. over an hour in in the UK, you know take that hour over the week, and how much time that's eating into you know yeah. um, your your time um, essentially to do other things, um, and it, it is that well because I'm in front of my computer, it's easy to just carry on rather than actually know this can wait until tomorrow. Um, just and, carry on, yeah. record a podcast. You know, yeah, exactly. Non <laughs> non-stop, really. <laughs> I, I, what, talking about that extra hours, it's interesting that it's extra hours. Now, I've worked in Singapore for several years, and I know they work long hours there. So during the crisis, they worked an extra almost two hours. That's just madness. <laughs> They're probably working in the office 20 hours a day. Uh, well, that, or, and sorry, that is, in their own office is, yeah and that is the work day span yeah that is a day yeah. so i mean if you look at scary. it you know there's the J japan uk india us australia singapore brazil all more than an hour extra a day mm. but uh for those who can't see the chart germany worked 0.8 hours less so uh, i know where i'm looking for new jobs uh, if anyone's looking uh, there's, no there's they've worked 0.8 hours more was that point eight hours more on that? Yeah. That's my dodgy monitor I'm talking about. <laughs> Clearly more efficient, even with working more. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, following on, uh, I don't think we've overdone COVID too much, but the, the other topic with COVID is around uh, Microsoft Teams and the use of remote working and Zoom kind of came back into the news. Now, it was interesting. Neither of you had heard this one. I haven't seen it shared massively on Twitter, um, but they had their Zoom events. Uh, was it last week, October 14th? Yeah, last week. Um, and they had Zoomtopia and they've announced that Zoom will have end to end encryption. So all those people are saying use Microsoft Teams because it's safer, more secure might have to be a little bit more cautious around uh, what they say on that. It's the, the first one that will allow up to it. Um, it's going to be a technical preview from this week it's for free and pay, paying users to have encryption. I think it's certainly the one leveled at Zoom as the biggest thing to think about versus teams so it'll be quite a bit of competition it was a, a few other announcements they've, they've got zaps coming which sound distinctly like uh, teams apps uh on their team zaps teams mm, i hadn't thought about that uh they've also got immersive scenes which in no way at all sounds uh, anything like together mode uh so having seen microsoft really uh, being inspired by Zoom uh, fairly recently if, and then jumping ahead with the together mode, making new ideas that differ them from Zoom. It's now Zoom's turn to come back and uh, effectively copy a lot of what Teams does. So it'll be interesting. It's a natural yeah. progression, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's interesting, though, in terms of kind of, you know, Microsoft Teams very much, you know, business focused. And it, but it does have a personal element, whereas I feel Zoom isn't hasn't been business focused, but has got more of the, you know, everyone's using it, a kind mm. of personal kind of um, market share, if you like. And it's interesting that the kind of Microsoft and, and Zoom doing the battle of well, how to get the business. Uh, certainly, those those changes. So there's Zoom a lot of are, businesses using it though, still, whether mm -hmm. officially or unofficially, and it's gradually kind of got through. I, I think. Yeah, you look at the cabinet office here in the UK, we're using it for a lot of their meetings yeah. uh, and places like that. So there, there are a lot of, I, I, I agree with you, it doesn't feel like it's targeted more at the business, it's across the board, but 
when you have that rapid adoption that they had, I think a lot of people were jumping for it. I think it's it's also it's it started off as personal, but actually, you know, I was speaking to, mm. to somebody earlier on in the week who said that, you know, they were using it for education. They were using it for training, you know, and it's a, mm. essentially it's a, an easy to use tool. Um, mm. So I think a lot of organizations are seeing that it fits the gap where they, you know, if they haven't bought into to Microsoft and Office 365, it's the obvious first step if they have an immediate yeah. need for for conferencing and, and i think if you have slack it works very nicely with slack slack it's been very integrated there so uh if, if you are an organization that's gone down that route it's a natural place to to pick it up so uh yeah well all i can say is i'm looking forward to see what teams comes up with next to uh, counter that <laughs> uh, be the good news um I thought some interesting smaller announcements uh, popped out, if I can uh, find those quickly. So small updates, you know, we, we had the big announcements of Ignite, but now a few small things are starting to creep out. Some of the things are hitting the roadmap. Uh, modern content types for lists and libraries. So we're finally getting a modern view for that. Uh, doesn't look very modern, looks like just a random list uh, at that point, but you, you can see the, the ability to add content types for those looking on the screen um trying to take away more and more of that classic view which i think is a, a good thing I, I was thinking about this and you, you might know gary it am i one of the few things that's left in classic view is the ability to add sharepoint modern sharepoint framework apps that still adding apps is on the classic view isn't it you can you can do that uh, yeah um the yes uh, sorry when you're adding from the the catalog from your yeah, organizational from the, catalog from, yes Yes, so it's, it's the kind of the old SharePoint store, isn't it? That kind of um, yeah. Uh, screen. Yeah, that's still classic. Yeah. Which which made me laugh on the things that, that the kind of SPFX was one of the first things coming from the modern world. Adding those is still one of the few things in classic that's left behind. So uh, uh, it, this one's strange, though. I mean, it's it's taken so long for content types to appear. Um, you know, it, it, you always get the feeling that it's just SharePoint Online modern approach has been folder mm. first, hasn't it? And content yeah. types have pretty much disappeared um, from, you know, eh, the the whole modern experience. So to add them back in is a bit strange because now obviously it puts it a bit more front and center. We start mm. to go into Teams, you know, we're still waiting for the metadata um, to really arrive in Teams. It's there, but not, there's, you know, I did, it's not great, but. I agree. I, I did think they were going to kind of, basically get rid of content types and have the same sort of functionality being something new in much the same way that Microsoft lists is obviously a brand new tool and in no way SharePoint list rebranded I thought they might try and do something similar with content types and have a new way of looking at it but it, it well, feels like actually no they're just keeping them as content types and taking a bit of time to renew them really. it was a very interesting the site designs when they kind of said well you can create a content type quite easily when you deploy a site design but you can't easily reuse a content type and yeah. uh, that kind of indicated that maybe there was something coming but yeah it's it's strange i know you you kind of expect that you're still going to have metadata and you expect that if you're going to have the same metadata across the board content types still serve a very valid mm -hmm. purpose uh, you know they make they do make life easier but as you say, they've not been. Well, sometimes they make it harder, I would say, but uh, it depends how you deploy it. Do it properly, and it do it properly, it and it's yeah. and it's all right. Um, you use the content type hub, and it definitely makes your life harder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dear, <laughs> oh dear, but that's been replaced though with something with a content type hub. Yeah, the same, yes. yes. <laughs> with a new good-looking UI. Yes, the same it, stuff yes. in the background <laughs> the same pain <laughs> I, I have to admit I, ha I haven't tried it to see if it's got more reliable and more effective um because i don't want to be bitten would by you, that would, again but... would you dare do that i no. think one of one of the things that's quite interesting and i'm i'll be intrigued to see where they take this is where you go into files in teams you used to be able to get the information up around an item if you selected it and then go in and see the metadata but that's mm. no longer there so there it is you can't, if you select a file, you select the info button and the uh, properties appear on the right. It's not there. Sits back, thinks of demo environment, right. make sure he's not sharing. Now checking quick on a SharePoint environment, who's right, who's wrong? Yeah, I, so it's, 
so yeah i've not seen Unless that for, I'm competitive and uh, we'll go look for that for probably at least six weeks yeah <laughs> no i think uh, so i think that and the reason i was thinking about that uh, relates slightly to the the next news article uh, i'll come back to prove myself right in a minute um he's moving, he's moving on i can see what you're doing there <laughs> i'll come back to it because uh, we'll go quiet otherwise um Require page properties are coming to. So if you've got SharePoint pages, you've been able to put properties against those for a, a long, long time that you have the ability to edit those easily on the side of the page. What was it, about a year, 18 months ago? Um, you've been able to put page properties onto the page. Now you can actually have required properties. So you can't save a page without filling those out, which is always a little bit of a, a, a gap. I know we, we have one client we were working with just wanted to be able to put some metadata on there and they were just finding people weren't doing it because it wasn't obvious you had to fill it out and they were having to spend a lot of time in, I think we, we put a flow in in the end to try and remind people to do it um, so this will be really nice really really glad to see this November to yeah. December time I do I do hope that it the UI supports that and that it's not um, an awkward UI to see those mandatory fields um, because that's I think that was one of the things where they said oh well you can upload items and files and then it'll flag when they're incomplete that made it a lot easier to get content in yeah while yeah. still being aware that there's stuff missing so so long as it's easy and it doesn't block people then that'll be that'll be fantastic yeah no, i think it'd be really good to see that and, and it feels like there's a few little changes like this that are creeping in at the moment nothing major on their own but taking a few of those together will really nicely change the experience for people um i'm pausing slightly still trying to prove myself right um and i, I think so uh, just, i'm not going to come back to this sorry everyone i might even edit this out of the show uh, afterwards um especially if i'm wrong um <laughs> but just just to show you out so that's a document library so you can select the document and going, going to, you can go into terms info to Oh, sorry, in Teams. Uh, teams. Ah, that's, that's the bit that's I missed. The bit. So that I is still there for items, but not there for yeah. files. Ooh, that is and, it. and this is now so proving my point about away. the content types being added now into SharePoint. And then if it's not appearing in Teams. It's not appearing in Teams. There, there's there's too much of a, a a gap appearing. It's like I want them to get closer. I want to look in files and have the same experience as what I do in SharePoint. I don't want two different things. And yeah. I was hoping that they were going to move closer, but this is not suggesting that. No. Uh, which is a little and bit. It does it, it does make it very difficult to kind of present a, a comprehensive use of metadata when you click in and you don't get the, the information. So you can't actually go in and edit the, the metadata for a single document. Huh, that's madness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're both right there, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed the bit well, where you said in Teams, and that, yeah, it's because no, I've been it, looking at it earlier today, and I was like- No, I put, I put it this together as a demo for a client and found out yeah. when I, did the demo for a client and went and you just go <laughs> oh, oh that's there. always a good moment yeah it's, oh, always, it's the always best special. time to find something out yeah exactly when the client brings it up um so what i am looking for talking of demos look at that seamless link there thank you Al. um I, we we talked about in the last show nucleus as one of the uh, interesting things that came out from ignite and jeff teepers oh and another thing um and project nucleus if you haven't heard in the last show where have you been why are you not listening um was about getting that uh, that uh, pwa experience that offline app that ability to work with your microsoft lists um locally on the browser so adding a what's it called a document sync engine that, that would work within the browser keep stuff offline make your filtering grouping by all that work a lot better and this sounded lovely it was and another thing certainly my thoughts were well this can be a bit like sharepoint spaces maybe 18 months two years down the line it would finally hit ga spaces has hit ga by the way if you haven't seen that um but actually on the october pmp calls uh, we got a demo of it and the demo looks really quite impressive and you can request to go on the preview 
Um, there are some links on the uh, in the call that you can go and try and sign up for. Uh, and I also asked uh, VC Juvenen, would this allow better performance for doc libraries too? And yep, that's the intention. Uh, and on the, and maybe I didn't ask the question the right way thinking about it, but on the demo, they were showing a million items in the list and it working. You being able to filter that, sort it, search through it and seeing the same performance as you'd expect on anything else. Um, so my, my assumption, and maybe jumping too far here, is that that 5,000 issue starts to go away even further than this. <laughs> I, I struggle to believe that a little bit, but that, and, and I have, they've been very cautious around that, but it certainly feels like things are edging that way, which would be very well, nice. It, it gets around the 5,000 issue. It doesn't yeah. solve it. It's a workaround. It'll be batching in the background, storing it local, then then syncing it. Um, I mean, it's interesting. I didn't actually see this. Um, I didn't actually join the community call, but did they talk more about the engine? So is it using OneDrive? Uh, that's already there or is it something completely new just thinking if they've now got files in there that is it just using what one drive's so, got I, well the other the other the other, the other question is is it an indexing operation rather than a you know truly offline in terms of you know your million files if you have a proper index on it nice b tree then uh, you can index it and and get there quickly, really, really quickly. It's what you know databases have used for a thousand yeah. years now. So if it's just if it's index, <laughs> if it's using effective indexing, then that would be that would be fantastic because it would just mean that you can get to the items, you can group, you can filter, you can sort much more effectively because you're using a separate data structure rather than actually going direct to the list and having to do a full read of every single item in the list yeah it will be interesting to see and just reminded me of one article i think related to that that uh, our, our good friend uh, peter rising shared um on linkedin i don't know if you saw this one as well sorry we didn't mention this at the beginning um but someone's done an analysis of testing a sharepoint library with a million documents so they've they've gone into a sharepoint online library loaded a million documents, in fact, over a million, as you can see there, and then gone through a set of scenarios. So they started with a classic view um, and went down to what works. So they opened it in a classic view, sort by name, sort by name in a classic view, modern view, and just looked at where things worked and didn't work. So if you try sorting with an unindexed column, can't show that. And they mm -hmm. went through the different bits and you went through things that it nicely told you it didn't work things that just failed, just went, you know, I can't do anything with it. Um, and really a mixture of things there. I mean, the, the honest answer from reading this is don't do it. <laughs> it's a really dumb idea. That's so many things will break. It's not worth it. But if you have someone asking you, why shouldn't you do it? This is now the article to go to and go, yeah, this is what happened. So you can do this. That's fine. You can't do this. It, it, it's interesting though because I, I did see this. I saw um, uh, Dennis, who's who actually put, has put this post together. Mm. He actually put it on LinkedIn to say, "This is what I'm going to do. Have you got any ideas of of things to try?" Basically, um, which is quite interesting because I've been doing a project and there's a list with 260,000 items in, which is not a million, but it's still Nothing. a substantial number. But it's interesting the things that do break. So, you yeah. know, you can't have over 50,000 unique items in a SharePoint list. So that's a low level limit. That's fine. I wasn't doing that. That's all right. 50,000 unique permissions. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So permissions. if you yeah. go over 50,000 items with unique permissions on them, then you hit the limit. Oh, if so I've got a question to... for you, Gary. I've got oh, a question. Yeah. Define a unique permission. Oh, uh, so you've broken the inheritance on the list item. Oh, getting ultra geeky today. On oh, absolutely. List. Well, <laughs> the thing which I didn't didn't know until there was a question at the end about ooh permissions on this list. You can't break the permissions on the list if you've gone over a hundred thousand items. Mm. It just stops you. If it's below, you can do that. Um, but yeah. It, some really interesting peculiarities um, with with list items that you wouldn't expect, but um, yeah, it, it's not a relational database. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> this is just one list. <laughs> it's not looking to anything else. It's fine. Uh, 
why isn't SharePoint a date? No, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think a, a relatively quiet uh, news week that's coming through, but uh, events wise, getting very, very busy. Um, one that was announced this week that I personally am very excited about, I think, Al, you're going to be uh, in, involved with as well, is the South Coast Summit. So uh, this is the UK South Coast for uh, anyone listening internationally uh, down in Southampton, October 2021. There will be a fingers crossed face to face conference, which is very exciting news um, across Microsoft 365 is your uh, I think try to cover power platform. Um, I don't know if it's going into oh yeah, Dynamics as well. It's definitely on there. So a, a lot of different to tracks. All the bases. Yeah. And it's going to be, uh, if anyone's a cricket lover, it's going to be in the Aegeus Bowl in Southampton, which is a beautiful place as well. So I think venue wise will be fantastic. Uh, really looking forward to me. Um, now, I haven't checked this with Aaron, but um, we have an idea that I'm working with him on that we're actually going to have a special track on there for podcasts. So I've reached out to a few of our fellow podcasters and we're going to try and get some live episodes recorded there. So uh, if, if anyone is a podcaster listening to this who might be interested, drop me a line. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But we're going to try and record some live ones with some other people and hopefully including Grey Hatbeard as well. So uh, watch this space for more info on that. Um, but yeah, should be a very good event. I know they're hoping it'll be next year before there's a request for speakers, but do sign up. I'll put there's a, a link to sign up and register interest. Uh, no no commitments at this stage, but trying to get an idea and how many people. So do sign up for that one. Should be an absolute huge event. Already seeing a lot of people from Microsoft and uh, um, the community getting involved with it. Yeah, I think Aaron's already got quite a few speakers committed to, mm. to speaking. So, yeah. It's quite a, quite a lot of interest in it. Looking uh, a little little nearer than that, uh, in fact, a little past on that in some cases. Gary, you you had a speaking last minute speaking event last week. Uh, well, not quite a speaking, but um, I was I was supposed to be attending uh, this. Yeah, assisting a global uh, Microsoft 365 developer boot camps. Uh, that was done over two days, uh, two virtual events um, covering SharePoint framework development in Teams and also um, uh, using Microsoft Teams toolkit in VS Code um, as well. So extending Teams, creating web parts, tabs, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, I actually helped out um, uh, the attendees on, on, on this session. It was uh, well, uh, well attended. There was about 80 odd people in both days, but they they ran them three times a day, so they wow. were done in different okay. time zones. So um, there was um, the Microsoft uh, 365 developer advocates, so there's Bob German, um, the iChip Bass, and Rabbi Williams as well, who are the three uh, uh, advocates who, who basically ran the sessions, and they were really really good. Received nice. really well. Great format. Um, in, in the way that they were delivered as well, good, really good use of Teams. Um, I think everyone had a, a really good time as well. Um, I know I did. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to them doing them again. And I think that's uh, there's a whole suite of uh, global Microsoft 365 developer boot camps. I think we mentioned very briefly the last call, uh, and really is across Africa, Asia Pacific. Uh, and even Europe. And I'm lucky enough to be speaking, at least virtually, in Hamburg and Cologne. So uh, talking on Microsoft Search uh, on one of them and the Adaptive Card Template Service, which, as we were saying before the show, uh, is a new talk, which means I need to get, get off my backside and make sure I finish that one off as well. So uh, some good ones coming up. Uh, talking of Asia Pacific, this coming Thursday, 23rd and uh, sorry friday 23rd and 24th october there's the aos southeast asia so i'll be speaking about microsoft search there um I, I i love this event i've been hearing a lot about these i think the the modern workplace one in paris that there's a few around the world of the aos events that they've been trying to get together and really focusing not just on the more technical side but the business decision makers and and giving a broad spectrum of talks so uh really looking forward to that event I mentioned earlier in the show I did used to live in Singapore so I'm hoping to see a few familiar faces trying to convince to come along and uh, uh, heckle me from that one um, 
and we've got a few events this global conforso tomorrow when we're recording this hopefully get the show out either tonight so it might be today there's the global com 4 from collab 365 they've got a few different events so they've got a turbo tuesday on the 20th of october um, i'm doing a couple of sessions there one about uh, opening up your term store so you can have approval process around your term store and allow more people to uh, view what's in there and request changes to it so you can manage your central metadata more effectively and also how you can get knowledge from things like twitter that's the example i'm going to be using using Azure Cognitive Search and pulling that um, pulling that into your own search on there as well. And Al, you've you've got another Turbo talk coming up in that one on the 10th, 10th of November, isn't it? 10th of November. So that's a Turbo talk on ceremonies for productivity. Very nice. nice. Yep. Just just talking about ceremonies. But yeah, that seems to be a bit of a theme <laughs> got going on because I'm we doing, like to uh, celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So this this Saturday, I've got uh, Microsoft to do again. So me mental health, good for your mental health, which has a, a bunch around ceremonies. Then we've got uh, Collab Days Benelux, Benelux this weekend, isn't it? Benelux this weekend. Uh, and then what have I got next? Doing a session for the uh, for the reactor in London on the 9th of November mm. around productivity and collaboration. Um, so that that one that's for the reactor, not in the reactor, isn't it? It's not in, it's so remote. Right. Yeah. 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 So they're still not doing in person events in the reactor, but they are doing a series of of sessions um, remotely streamed. So, yes, but that is under the under the reactor banner. Uh, and then I've got 13th of November, I've got Microsoft 365 Chicago, which I'm quite looking forward <laughs> to. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't get to go there. So, yeah, I'm traveling the world from the comfort of my chair. <laughs> It, it's interesting we're talking about all these events we've talked about this in the past we not one of us have mentioned that uh, the european sharepoint conference was actually last week which is one of the big conferences it, you know throughout the through the year and it's just completely bypassed me with all of the events too. yeah that, that have been on that is usually one of the the, the, the big ones of the year and it's just yeah it's like uh, any other conference now it's a bit strange it's it is a little odd, isn't it? The way they, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keep joking with my wife that I'm going to be travelling the world, but fortunately, I don't get to see anybody. No. So. Um, and, and unfortunately, I think uh, Kevin's uh, left us. I think he's not travelling. I think I think he has, <laughs> isn't he? His his teams has appeared to have crashed. Who would have which thought? Is, which is really quite amusing, seeing as he's in control of the. Uh, the session so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so this will he's... be interesting when he reappears oh i think i think we should stop it and leave before he gets uh before he gets back <laughs> what do you reckon uh, about, oh no what's happened with this we've, we've disappeared into team's wilderness <laughs> excellent so let's bring uh session one to a close so we'll be back in a second with uh just say no uh talking about how to manage our time and uh, not to overcommit to things and hopefully by then we will have Kevin back <laughs>